Okay, I'm in uh, chapter 12. I'm doing exercise 12.3. We're dealing, chapter 12 deals with moral, moral judgments. <clears throat> okay, so let me go over more uh, chapter uh, exercise 3. Which of the following are moral value judgments? So we have to distinguish between value judgments, which are moral, and which some which are not. Marina's car puts out horrible smoke. For the sake of all, she should get it tuned up. Uh, that's a moral judgment. It's something she ought to do, moral value judgment. And the key word is that she should. She should get it turned up for the sake of for sake for the sake of all. That's a moral value judgment. Two. After the surgery, Nikki's eyesight improved considerably. Uh, no moral judgment. It's a it's a uh, it's a value judgment. It improved considerably, but it's not moral. There's no uh, in a moral value judgment, if you a moral value judgment implies that somebody can be guilty or uh, you can you can praise them or blame them. Uh, three, Miss Beeson ought not to have embezzled money from the bank. That's a moral value judgment. <clears throat> uh, four, violence is always wrong. That's a moral value judgment. Five, Matthew ought to wear the sweater more often. It looks great on him. No, it's a it's not a moral value judgment. Six, Sandy, you are one of the uh, laziest people I know. That's not a moral value judgment. Uh, seven, my computer software is really good. It, it even corrects my grammar. No. Uh, eight, Lisa has been very good tonight, according to the babysitter. Lisa has been very good tonight. Um, that's a moral value judgment. Nine, Judge R R Ramesh is quite... Uh, While well, informed, there's no moral value judgment there. Ten, Judge Ramesh, Ramesh's decision gave each party exactly what it deserved. And that is a moral value judgment. He, he was fair. <clears throat> Eleven, the editor couldn't use my illustrations. She said they were not particularly interesting. No, no moral value judgment. It's not, no. Uh, 12, wow, that was a tasty meal. No, value judgment. 13, the last set of essays was much better than the first. No, value judgment. Uh, 14, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yes, that is. 15, people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. <clears throat> um, let's see, is that a value? Let's see here. People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones <clears throat> well that could be taken as yes or no depending how you're taking it uh i would say if i would say yes so uh, on that one so this one's kind of iffy it could go either way depending how you want to interpret it if you're interpreting it as they shouldn't throw stones just so, because uh because otherwise they can uh, be uh bad consequences uh, then it wouldn't be. I, I, number fifteen, I would say yes. That's probably the simplest way. It's a moral value judgment. Sixteen, you really shouldn't make so much noise when the people upstairs are trying to sleep. Uh, and that would be a moral value judgment. Uh, if you're uh, assuming that it's, it wouldn't be. It would be uh, it wouldn't be fair to them. <clears throat> so I would say sixteen is a moral value judgment. Some of these you can you can depending how you interpret what's going on, it, it, you can interpret them different ways. But this one, if, if what's implied is that you're not being kind to them, then it would be a moral value judgment. Uh, Seventeen, it is unfair. When you're talking about unfair, you're definitely talking about an moral value judgment. It's unfair the way Professor Smith asks questions no normal person can answer. That is a moral value judgment. 18, allegro means fast, but not that fast. No. 19, being in touch with God gives your life meaning and value. Is that a moral value judgment? <clears throat> um... <clears throat> I would say no for that one. Is that a moral value judgment? That, I don't know, that uh, I, that to me 
could go either way. Um, being in touch with God gives your life meaning and value. Okay, I, 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 I'll say yes for that one. Um, okay, yes. I think that would be the best. It is a moral value judgment. And 20, thou shalt not kill. That's a moral value judgment. Okay, now the next one we're dealing with different ethical theories, consequentialism, deontology. So I will explain those as we go. So let's look at exercise 12, 12, 4. Um, we have, okay, 12, 4. Yes, innocent civilians have been killed in Iraq, but in the long run, the world will be a safer place if Iraq becomes a democracy. Okay, that is consequentialism, uh, because consequentialism is, is when you say that something is good or bad depending upon its consequences. Here, the consequences would be good. So that's the consequentialist view. Although many cultures have practiced human sacrifice within the culture, it was not thought to be wrong. So human sacrifice within those cultures wasn't really immoral. Okay, that's uh, um, moral, moral relativism. And moral relativism is a view that certain things are right in certain cultures and they're the same thing could be right in certain cultures and wrong in a different culture, depending upon what that culture believes. Uh, three, you shouldn't discriminate against anyone. Preferential treatment is wrong, period. You shouldn't discriminate against anyone, no matter how much society benefits from it. That's duty ontology. Duty ontology or deontology, duty ethics or deontology means that certain things are are wrong, period, irrespective of what consequences may be. For sure, we might benefit from expanding Highway 99, but seizing a person's property against his or her wishes is just wrong, period. That's duty ethics, because again, duty ethics says something can just, it's absolutely wrong or right, irrespective of consequences. Five, sure, we might benefit from expanding a benefit from expanding, <coughs> excuse me, Highway 99, but it's wrong to see someone's property, at least in this country. In our society, property rights are fundamental. That's moral relativism. Things are <clears throat> one thing could be right in one country, depending on what people believe, and wrong in another country, depending on what people believe. Six. Sure, we might benefit from, from expanding Highway 99, but it's wrong to see someone's property. You have a God-given right to own property. And that would be religious absolutism, meaning something is right or wrong depending on what you think God believes or says. says. Uh, seven, if a company doesn't want to hire a woman, nobody should force it to. A company has a right to hire whomever it wants. That's, that's uh, duty ethics, deontology. Okay. It's simply that if something is right or wrong, period. Eight, you have, no, you have to balance a person's rights against the common good. Pornography isn't good for a society and we should get rid of it. That's a consequentialist view because if something is right or wrong depending upon whether it's good or bad for society. Nine, gay marriage, I think it's only fair. The right to happiness is a basic human right. That would be uh, uh, duty ethics, B. Certain people have rights, uh, irrespective of consequences. Gay marriage, I'm against it. Once gays start marrying, the next thing you know, brothers and sisters will get married, then more moms and sons, society will come apart. And that would be uh, consequentialism, A, because it, it's wrong because it has bad, bad consequences. Now we go to exercise 12.5. In each of the following passages, a general moral principle must be added. Um, as an extra premise to make the argument valid, supply such a principle. Okay, so number one, uh, after borrowing Maury's car, Leo had an accident and crumpled a fender. So Leo ought to pay whatever expenses were involved in getting Maury's car fixed. So we need to supply a principle. 
Basically, moral arguments are deductive. They're going to be all deductive because you start with a moral principle and then argue deductibilis. You basically, you subsume a particular under a universal. Um, <clears throat> you start with a general principle and you take a specific example of it. So in this case here, the conclusion that we're trying to reach is that Leo ought to pay uh, whatever expenses were involved in to get the car fixed. Uh, why why should he do that after because he borrowed the car and he had an accident and crumbled a fender so the moral principle is that whenever you borrow someone's car and and mess it up you're responsible for it okay two when sarah bought the lawnmower from jean she promised to pay another fifty dollars on the first of the month since it is now the first, Sarah should pay Jean the money. Okay? The moral principle is you should keep your promises. You should always keep your promises. That's She made a promise. You should keep it. <clears throat> Three, Kevin worked on his sister's car all weekend. The least she could do is let him borrow the car for his interview next Thursday. The moral principle here is that when so, if somebody does you a favor, you ought to return the favor, okay? You ought to return a favor, whatever it is. But in this case, it's borrowing a car, lending somebody to your car. Air, uh, four, Harold is obligated to supply 10 cords of firewood to the lodge by the beginning of October since he signed a contract guaranteeing deliver of the wood by that date. The moral principle is you ought to keep your you ought to keep your contracts. If you agree to do something, you ought to keep it. Five, since it was revealed yesterday on the 11 o'clock news that Mayor Ahern has been taking bribes, he should step down any day now. And the moral principle is that public officials um, who have been convicted of taking crime uh, bribes should step down from their job, should retire, or should um, step down from their job. Six, as a political candidate, Havenhurst promised to put an end to crime in the inner city. Now that she is in office, I'd like to see the result. We'd like to see the results. Uh, the moral principle is political candidates should keep their promises. Seven, since he has committed his third felony, he should automatically go to prison. Okay. Since he has committed his third felony, he should automatically go to prison for 25 years. Uh, the moral principle is whoever commits their third felony should automatically go to prison for 25 years. So it applies to everyone. Since he has committed his third felony, then he should. So the moral principle is anyone who commits their third felony should go to prison for 25 years. Number eight, Laura's priest has advised Laura that her <clears throat> and her husband not to sign up for the in vitro fertilization program at the hospital because such treatments are unnatural. Um, the moral principle is you shouldn't do anything which is unnatural. Nine. Oh, Ali has been working overtime a lot lately, so he should receive a bonus. Whoever works overtime, the moral principle is whoever works overtime should receive a bonus. Ten. It is true there are more voters in the northern part of the state, but that shouldn't allow the north to dictate to the south. The moral principle is... Um, uh states that have more people than uh, states that have more voters than other states shouldn't dictate to other states what they should do okay so i'll do next time i'll do the next uh, exercise <clears throat>